consisting of a single row of epithelium cells, which constantly divide to produce new cells. The keratinocyte accounts for 70 to 80% of the cellular population of the epidermis. There is an unlimited resource of keratinocyte stem cells, and this cell continues to function despite its age and cellular damage. Keratinocytes are programmed to undergo an event called terminal differentiation. And this event is a type of controlled programmed journey, which slowly takes place as the keratinocyte moves up through all layers of the epidermis to the stratum corneum. During this differentiation cycle, the keratinocyte makes multiple changes in both its appearance and function, whilst forming the many lines of skin barrier defense of the epidermis. This video follows the journey of the keratinocyte from mitosis through the five layers of the epidermis to its final act of desk formation. The basal cell layer responsible for cellular regeneration is situated above the dermal epidermal junction, separating the epidermis from the dermis. As the keratinocytes of the basal layer move upward into the spinosum layer, their cell shape changes from cuboidal to polyhedral. Here, the spinous and intercellular junctions called desmosomes become more pronounced through cell-to-cell -cell adhesion and by tethering keratinocyte cells to one another. The integrity of these junctions and epidermal strength from the basal cell layer all the way to the granular layer is achieved by these desmosomes. It is in the stratum spinosum layer that the keratinocyte plays one of its primary roles in skin cell barrier defense through a direct interaction with the melanocyte to provide protection for the cell nucleus. When melanosomes release into the extracellular space of the spinosum layer, they are picked up by the keratinocytes using the endocytosis method and PAR2 receptor. After the keratinocyte receives the melanosomes, the keratinocyte continues the journey upward through the layers of the epidermis towards the stratum corneum to desk formation. The keratinization process is well underway in the upper cells of the spinosum layer, and cell shape is further changing while moving into the granular layer. It is in the granular layer that the keratinocyte becomes less flexible and flattened in appearance. It is at this stage that the formation of the cornified cell envelope commences. The cell envelope forms a monomolecular layer along the entire inner surface of the plasma membrane, including over the desmosomes, to form a scaffold for the future deposition of an extracellular lamellar lipid structure. This process also forms the hardened shell that is part of the process that turns a keratinocyte into a corneocyte. It is here that other changes occur within the granular layer that contribute to the skin barrier defense systems. These are the formation of odlin bodies and the natural moisturizing factor. It is in the transitional phase the odlin bodies are released to form a multilamellar lipid structure with the cornified shell of the corneocyte. Together, the cornified cell envelope and the multilamellar lipids become essential components of effective physical and water barrier functions in the skin by slowing transepidermal water loss. Finally, the nucleus of the cell deactivates, triggering the next generation of ascending cells within the basal layer. The remaining corneodesmosomes dissolve. This final action prepares the cell for desquamation as a standalone, independent cell. The keratinocyte, or now corneocyte, has reached its final destination in the stratum corneum and now plays the vital role as the second in line of skin barrier defense. The corneocyte is the first cell to have contact with the outside environment, and it is this layer that acts as one of the principal defenses of the body against injury and the invasion of bacteria. The corneocyte is an integral part of the innate immune system and the physical barrier of the skin, meaning that this cell is the leading cell of the epidermis.